Hello and welcome to a new edition of Tax Fridays. My name is Ruth Pasuelo from Kerbal.com and today we're going to figure out who is the best player. Is it Kevin Durant or is it James LeBron? For those of you that don't know, they are NBA basketball players, okay? We are going to do that using statistics. More specifically, we're going to use a standard deviation to see who is the best player or the playing styles, maybe, you could say. So this is the third video I do on statistics, explaining the concepts of the statistics and how you can actually calculate them in Power BI. So I am going to ask you a question or a favor. If you want me to continue with this series, thumbs up. If you want me to stop doing this, thumbs down. Don't worry about clicking thumbs down. If you don't want me to continue, just do it because it's the best way for me to know if you're interested in this type of content. I will look at the analytics, of course, but hey, if you tell me, it's easier. So with that said, how about we jump in Power BI and we figure out who the best player is? Let's do it. Oh, and I'll see you at the end, as always. So in today's video, we are going to try to find out who the best player is. Is it LeBron or is it Duran? So for that, I've gone to the NBA website and I downloaded or copy pasted the statistics for the plays that they had, the matches they had in 2017. Downloading to Power BI, you will get the file and uh, calculated the average and the standard deviation. First of all, how to calculate standard deviation is quite easy. We go to, for example, LeBron and the standard deviation, there are actually two standard deviations in Power BI. You have standard deviation from sample and standard deviation from a population. The difference between sample and population is actually quite easy. So for example, let's say that we had election in Sweden last week and let's say that you want to run some polls if you would have if you would interview every swede 10 million swedes uh, for your poll then you would have the entire population but oftentimes i mean it's not viable to interview everybody you can't do that either so what you normally do is you sample the population so you pick swedes to ask who they are voting and then they can make conclusions out of that okay so you pr when you are sampling data that's an entire topic of its own you have to be able to you have to make sure that it's representative so you don't want to pick you know just in a single area or just males you, ha you have to make sure that you pick as much variation as you can trying to find points from the entire data set right or the entire population so you have a standard deviation for the population and then you have a standard deviation for the sample. And uh, how you do it? Well, the standard deviation, you just write standard deviation and then the column that you want to do the standard deviation on. And that's it, my friends. The actual calculation gets done by Power BI and Excel exactly the same way, super easy. So what we're going to focus on this video is what does it mean? I mean, how do I interpret standard deviation? How do I, what do I do with that? So if we go to our sample, we have Duran has a 34.38 mean and a 2.75 standard deviation. And LeBron has 34.55 and it has a 4.77 standard deviation. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Well, um, first of all, standard deviation is a measure of spread. So it's telling us, you know, if you remember on the first, on the second video where we talk about the, the mean and the media, it was a measure of the center. So where are most of our data points from the data set? This standard deviation is actually a measure of how spread those data points are from the center, from the mean. 
So how far from the mean our points are is the standard deviation. So what we can see here is that the standard deviation from the run is 2.75 from the mean. And for LeBron is 477, which means basically that Duran has is closer to the mean. So his spread is less. Let's graph this. If we will actually plot the points into Power BI, we will actually have a quite a nice view of how this looks. So you can see here, these are the plots. So it's a frequency chart, basically. I just counted the points, how often a point occurs for Duran and for LeBron. And this is how it looks for Duran, and this is how it looks for LeBron. Now, as you can see, LeBron has an outlier. You can see here, there was a match that he had 57 points, which is a problem when you're using standard deviation. For standard deviation, you want to you want to have a normal distributed um, data set. And uh, uh, we will see why later on in the video. In this case, we're going to ignore the fact that it's not standard distributed, but uh, you will see again in the end why it is important that it is. Um, so if we, for now, exclude the outlier, this is how they would look. And you, do you remember in that video that I said, when you are calculating the average, make sure you calculate the mean too. So I've calculated the mean. They are here, we have, the, we have them here. So we have the average and the median, and the median, I meant median. And then we have the average and the median, okay? The median is calculated as I showed in the previous video with median. And here you can see a hint of and a lot outlier happening, right? Because you can see here it's been excluded. Let's bring it back. You can see that the average is 34.55, while the median is 33.50. And here you can see that the median and the average are almost the same. So when you're calculating average, remember, calculate always the mean. So it gives you an idea of what's going on. So for LeBron, this is data set is not good for the standard deviation but for just explaining what it is this is a fantastic example and i just kept it just to remind you what we talked about in the previous video so we have um go back we have the average standard deviation for both players so who is the best player and this is what we need to explain the standard deviation a little bit more so if we go in here, there is actually, perhaps this is better that I go through the rule directly. So there is a rule um, of a standard deviation that is the 66, 95, 99.7 rule. And let me show you what that is. Uh, so we're going to get a pen and then we're going to draw. So here we have our normally distributed data set, which we don't have for LeBron. And this is the mean. And this rule says that 68% of the data points will fall from one standard deviation away from the mean. And then we have 95. And then we have 99.7%, which is just the, the small, you know, the, the tails of our standard um, uh, distribution of data. So what this basically is saying is most of the points that we have in our data set will fall within 68%, one standard deviation of the mean. So 68% of the data points, if this is normally distributed, will be one standard deviation of the mean. So it gives you an idea of how that curve looks like. So let's draw this curve for LeBron and Duran and see how that looks like. 
we go here, standard deviation. Then I have actually calculated everything. We have the mean in the mean in in the middle. The mean is the average. And then we have plus one, plus two, plus three. Plus one plus two plus three are basically the average plus the standard deviation. So we're calculating how how this curve looks for them is one standard deviation away and minus one standard deviation. Two and two, three and three. So you have it here. One standard deviation is the average plus the standard one standard deviation. Two standard deviation away from the mean is the average plus two standard deviations, right? And three is three and the same on the other side, but minus minus one standard deviation minus two minus three. And what you can see here is that this is the mean for Lebron, and this is plus one minus one. It is the difference of ten points. Okay, if we go to Duran. We have the mean here, and then we have plus one, minus one standard deviations away from the mean. And this, we have here a difference of six points. So what this is telling us is that Duran is more consistent. So he's always, or 68% of the time, he's going to be six points points away from the mean. So he's, you're going to be able to predict his points more accurately because his curve is a little bit more like that. It's like taller, while LeBron's curve is wider. So you will have him having here, he will have higher scores, but he will also have a lot of lower scores. So he can, he's going to perform very, very well or poorly. Often, more often than our friend here, Duran, where he has much less good scores and much less low scores. So he's performing consistently through the matches. So now you have to decide what you want to do. You, do you want to know how your player is performing? Then Duran is your player. Do you want to know? Do you want to have you know these like super high scores just for the show, or you know, in average, they, LeBron managed to perform better. But you never know. Maybe in an important match, you perhaps want to have a Duran player instead of a LeBron in case that he goes into the tail and that's very bad. Does it make sense? I hope it does anyhow. So I guess we now know who the best player is. Best it depends on what you consider to be a good thing, right? So I hope that this explains what standard deviation is, how it is calculated, and gives you a better understanding of the whole thing. Again, if you want me to continue with this series, thumbs up. Otherwise, thumbs down so I know. Uh, next Friday will not be a statistics video either way. It is actually Power Week. That means that the Power BI team must release a new Power BI desktop version and I will do a video a day reviewing the new features. So I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> but with that aside, it is Friday. It is weekend. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again on Monday with the Power Week. Until then, take care and bye-bye.